to Jamaica in 1979 in the Peace Corps, and one of my classmates uh, was working with a famous Jamaican storyteller named Miss Lou. Her name was Louise Bennett. Uh, she was a famous uh, children's storyteller and um, a very colorful woman. All of the children had grown up in Jamaica listening to Miss Lou's story. She had written several children's books uh, based on many of the African characters uh, that the slaves from Africa had brought to Jamaica. Uh, one of the main characters was called Anansi, and you find him in West African children's stories. He was a mischievous spider, and this story I'm going to tell you uh, was based uh, somewhat on uh, the mischievous character of, of this spider. So I'm in Jamaica, and I'm uh, working with this other Peace Corps volunteer and Miss Lou, and um, she was telling the story to these children, a group of uh, eight, nine-year-olds. Uh, she was telling this story to them. And when she started the first sentence of the story, I got this lump in my throat because I realized that it was the same story that my grandmother had told me when I was a child on the eastern shore of Maryland. And I found out later that the slaves that had come from Ghana and Sierra Leone uh, to Jamaica and to the eastern shore of Maryland where they worked on the plantations and in the uh, fish industry on the Chesapeake Bay, they evidently had transported this children's tale which, uh, which I found out where it came from. I never knew the, the origin of it. So if you can imagine, uh, we're in this studio and Miss Lou is sitting in a chair and she's got a group of uh, uh, eight or nine year olds uh, on the floor around her and as with many children that age they're at kind of a precocious age where sex is just something they're starting to find out about and they ask a lot of questions and they're not quite ready for uh, the, the true facts and so uh, uh, many times these stories are ways that that things were explained to them in an acceptable manner not unlike uh, in American culture where we use the story about the stork and how they bring uh, babies to, uh, to families. So picture Miss Lou sitting here. She's great big, beautiful, uh, colorful outfit. And here's uh, seven or eight kids sitting in a circle around her. And um, one of the little boys raises his hand and he says, uh, Miss Lou, how come the dog them all the while them go around and smell each other backside? Well, Miss Lou just, she didn't blink an eye. She just started right off explaining it to him in, in her wonderful patois, uh, telling them the story. Oh, 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 no, oh, no, 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 the story about why the dog them smell each other tail. Well, let me tell you the story. You see, in the beginning of the world, when them not have so many dogs, only maybe two or three hundred dogs, all of the dogs decide to get together and have a big party. So them invite all the dogs of the world to come to this big party that they have. All of the dogs of the world except two. There were two bad boy dogs that were not invited because them mean, them play trick on the other dogs. And so these two were not invited to the party. So all the other dogs in the world, they come to the party and they go into the party hall and uh, when they go in, of course, they don't have no hat or coat or nothing, so they hang up their tail on the hook when they go into the party. So the two bad boy dogs, them think, well, we're not invited to the party, so we're going to have some revenge. So they go to the front of the building where all the dogs are inside, and they yell, fire, fire. Well, the dog, them bark and them howl and them yell, Lord Jesus, they run out of the building, they grab any tail them can off the hook, stick it on the back, and they run away to keep from being burnt up. So you see, today when you see the dog go around and them smell the tail of the other dog, them will look to see if the other dog have him tail that got mixed up at the party. Okay, thank you too.